Although this is a dough, you already know this is going to be a major departure in shaping from what you may have done so far if you've been following any of these playlists and videos on this channel. So we're going to squirt down a clean countertop. Wood is no good. You need granite. You need wet hands. And we're going to stretch this 75% hydration, 500 gram flour batch of dough into a large rectangle because we're going to spread cinnamon and sugar all over it and we're going to roll it up. So we're going to use gravity. We're going to work from the middle and then we're going to work the edges, similar to how you would shape pizza dough, same concept. You know, you work the sides, use your fingers. It's going to feel wet at first uh, on the surface, but the dough is going to absorb some of this liquid and it'll become more tacky and it will start to stick. And you'll kind of see here like the dough is retracting on itself. It's not because the dough is not ready. It's because the dough is, you know, on a wet surface, so it's not gripping on anything yet. But as you see, I am stretching it and it's starting to grab onto the countertop just a little bit. And, you know, there's a little hole back there in the corner. Don't worry about that. A little hole is fine, but you're really trying to keep and get an even layer happening here. And that's why we're going kind of, you know, the outsides, the middle, you know, stretch the middle too. Otherwise you're going to end up with a thick middle. We're trying to have a, a somewhat consistent layer of dough. And as you can see here, it's really starting to grip to the counter. It's starting to have like some good size to it, but we're not done yet. This is not big enough. The bigger we go, the better of a roll we're going to be able to create. You'll see what I mean. So you see edges now, stretching the edges, and I'm kind of using the countertop to stick it down to get it to grip. And right there, I'm trying to avoid that hole by going just a little deeper with my fingers more towards the center. See, more towards the center, less of the edge. So we're really trying to work the whole uh, thickness of the dough. And at some point, it's going to get to a point where there's no chance I'm getting back into the middle of this thing. And I'm really going to have to to lift like that and work the whole thing. And I'm not just pulling the very edge. I'm really kind of getting from, um, you know, more towards the middle of the dough. And here, working the edges. Is it big enough? Nope, not yet. We're going outside the camera frame. We want this thing to be a huge, thin rectangle. Because what makes the cinnamon bread great are the swirls. We want to have a ton of cinnamon and brown sugar in there. So that's a great size. Be generous with the cinnamon and the sugar. This is just brown sugar, and we do the cinnamon separate. And you can see I'm keeping edges, like a border around the side, like a crust on a pizza, because we need this thing to be able to seal itself. And that's also why we're going wet surface and not a floured surface. If we go floured, this thing is not going to stick together um, as well as it would if we're you know, using this wet kind of method. Um, I like cinnamon. Vanish with the cinnamon. You could add raisins to this if you wanted to. Um, and then rolling it up, we want to get lots of rolls, lots of swirls and spirals happening here. And, you know, it's going to seal itself on these edges, like on the outside edges, uh, where cinnamon and sugar should not be able to leak through it very easily. And, you know, I can't roll the whole thing because it's pretty long. If I could have gone a touch longer, see how I pulled that corner out? I want it to be a rectangle when I finish. I want it to be a symmetrical cylinder, you know, as opposed to letting that, that outside, that last end kind of tuck in. Um, I want a really awesome seam here so we can contain as much of the sugar and cinnamon as we can because it's going to want to escape. So there's my seam. Bring it closer, and we're going to you know, kind of seal it up a little bit. And you don't have to do much because it's so wet. It's going to stick to itself. That is the magic of what we're doing. You can see I really haven't had to fight with the counter yet. Now, the seam that was on the bottom, I'm kind of bringing it to face towards us because I want to get it tucked in and sealed. And I'm rolling this thing into a spiral. And then, you know, it's easier to kind of move the tail at this point. And our dough is nice and wet, so it's going to stick to itself. And we're going to give it some good time here to do that. I'm just kind of checking, make sure that the dough is like, you know, um, you know, gluing itself to itself. And you can see how sticky the counter is. So this next step, I'm going to throw down some flour to put the bottom side on flour because I'm going to leave it here. And if I leave it here and there's no flour on the bottom, I'm not going to get it off the counter. It just won't come with me. Because So there's some flour. We need a little more. I'm bringing it closer to me, a little more flour here just for the bottom so we can get it back off the counter and into a banneton because that's where we're going to go. Check the seams. Make sure it looks like it's gluing itself to itself. We're going to hit it with a little bit of dusting of flour. Go for it, Chris. Dust it. Yep. 
and I was kind of thinking like, ooh, do I need to let it seal a little bit more? Does it look like it's connecting? And it did. It looked like, you know, there were no gaps in that roll that I created. And I recover it. We give it like, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And then we're going to come back. I don't want to let it sit there forever. Uh, like I wouldn't do 30 minutes or an hour, just like 10, 15 minutes. And you can see how it kind of like pulled away from itself just a little bit. Uh, you give it just a little squeeze together, a little pinch. Um, and now we're going into a very well-floured banneton, even though I know this thing's going to leak sugar um, overnight when it's in the fridge. And, you know, easy flip because we'd put it, you know, on a good floured surface for the bottom. And I am not using a napkin. You can. Uh, it certainly helps to protect your banneton from sugar. And this banneton does end up with a ton of sugar in it. You'll see soon. Um, but, yeah, refrigerated overnight. It was 10 p.m. to about, this is 7 a.m., and regular kind of baking around type of procedure. Here's my parchment paper. My Dutch oven's in the oven getting hot at 450. And I kind of had a fight with this. It took me a good, you know, three minutes to convince this thing to come out because sugar is liquid and, you know, the sugar melted down and you could see it there on the, on the dough. And it had leaked out and kind of glued itself to the banneton. But it came out with no real problem. And because it's just shaped into that rolled up spiral, I'm going to score that spiral. Otherwise, this thing is going to expand and spring and go wherever the heck it wants. So I want to have some control of what it does. And, I, you know, you're going to find some spots where the sugar and the flour have kind of like set up together and glued together. And, you know, it'll feel like you're cutting through more of a piece of cardboard than a piece of dough here and there, depending on, you know, how solidified the sugar has gotten. But I'm just following the spiral all the way up to the top. And on the next one, I did two, of course. Um, I went a little deeper on it. This one was already kind of bleeding out some brown sugar, so I was being a little bit conservative with my score. Um, and we're going 450 instead of, you know, 500. We're going 450 for about 30 minutes. Uh, I want to protect it from the oven heat. Look at this amazing spring after 30 minutes. That guy looks cool. Uh, I'm going to keep going. There's a bunch of sugary liquid in there, so I, I'm not going to just pop it out at this point. I want to go a little longer. So this is about 10 minutes later. And now I'm changing out my paper because it was just starting to get a little dark. And I didn't want the sugar to burn and then have burnt sugar on my, my bread. So I'm just putting it back in on a fresh piece of parchment paper, no cast iron, because I want to just toast up all the rest of those sides. And here it is, the final cooked product. And um, you can see some of the coloring on it. It looks a little dark. That's you know just the nature of the sugar and some of the, uh, the cinnamon. Uh, but really nice loaf of, of cinnamon bread. We'll cut into this right here. Cinnamon bread. I made two. You always make two. This is why you make two. So this is the one that you saw me score. And after I scored it, I decided to go deeper on the next one because uh, I was not as afraid of releasing all the brown sugar and cinnamon that's inside the bread. Um, so, you know, when you make two loaves of bread, you can make some adjustments. Both of these are beautiful. This one's going to get gifted. This is for some friends. Here's the other one. They both have like really amazing squirrel swirls, great color. Um, I ended up changing out the parchment paper halfway through because uh, it was, you know, some of that sugar was starting to burn up. But a really cool loaf of swirly cinnamon bread. <laughs> Very soft, very light, very fluffy. Nice crust. What do we got? Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? So with this sourdough bread, I'm not going for a cinnamon roll. I'm not looking to frost it. This is going to be just like a really nice not too sweet kind of breakfast type of bread um, where you know you toast up and spread a little bit of chocolate on it and chocolate no so you toast up and spread a little butter on it i'm thinking about chocolate bread in my mind um and it's a great little breakfast and if you think about like how i rolled this up it's like dude there's no chance that this is going to be light and fluffy it's all sugar inside but you can see like we've got some really good oven spring and the crumbs still you know puffed up really nice and then we've got like a nice pocket of cinnamon here there's a little bit of swirl inside there um, really nice balance and this is a this is a cool looking loaf of bread easy modification or variation 
of a dough you already know how to make. We're just adding brown sugar, some cinnamon, kind of changing how we're shaping it. Easy. Breakfast bread.